Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over the discounted cash flow valuation method for a company that is a mature company and has stable growth. If you have not downloaded the template for tables 10.1 through 10.3, please do so now. First, I want to go to the first tab, which contains the current financial statements um, and also for the past four years. So you can notice that for this company, it um, it reached a relative, it was uh, quite a bit off four years ago, but then it, it, it reached a relatively stable growth stage is quite steady and the uh, profit margin again a good way to um, evaluate this is to take a to compute the common size statement to see how stable a company is in terms of its financial ratio uh, for this company most things seems to um, not have changed a whole lot over the past uh, four years and this is the projection for the current year Next, we're going to take a look at the items that we have identified as um, unique to this current owner and therefore um, need to be adjusted. In order for you to be able to identify those items, it assumes that you have industry knowledge. So this is where valuation differs from uh, some other um, standard um, financial calculation technique. You really have to know the industry well in order to uh, pick up unique uh, circumstances. So in table 10.2, we have identified these four line items as unique and need to be adjusted. First is we noticed that officers' wages are very high. So again, if you go back to table 10, um, you will see that they have a, um, a very high wage in the current year, much, much higher compared to prior years. And there's a reason for that. Um, and that is unique to, the, to this company and it is written up in the case. But it is obvious that something unique is going on and this is not something that will continue. So back to table two. So that's one of the things that we have identified. And we and this in this case, um, we believe that is relatively um, uh, certain. So there is no um, for the low estimate, high estimate. Um, we are fairly confident that the hundred thousand dollars can be reduced. Uh, the same is true for reduction in retirement contribution. Uh, we believe that if we hire a new um, uh, manager, we would not have to pay that. Um, the same thing for health insurance premium. We can um, choose a different health care plan, and therefore will be different. Uh, will not will be able to achieve and realize this savings. The one unknown factor uh, is savings from reduction in cost of goods sold due to quantity discount. Uh, we estimate that um, in the worst case scenario, um, we can save only $27,000 uh, or the saving can be as high as $42,000. Uh, the base case uh, uh, estimate is $34,500. So the total adjustment from operation is just the sum of these four items. So income from projection uh, from operations, we're going to take the uh, projection for this year. So let's take a look at what our projections is. So our projection uh, currently is $132,000. And we may want to check this. We want to want to see how how uh, how uh, how does this projection compare to the past four years? So we can take a look at the average of the previous four years. We see that we are not that far off. So there's a good chance that they will make these projections. Um, we're going to bring back, bring down the adjustments that we have computed. Uh, so these are all cost savings. So that's going to increase our income from operations. So our adjusted income from operation is $284,500. Next, let's go to the valuation model. That will be table 10.3. Remember that this is a stable growth company and we have examined the growth rate and the um, in terms of sales as well as income is relatively stable over the past four years. So we can apply the stable growth model. 
Notice in the uh, arrangement again in the layout of the model, once again, we clearly label the assumptions. These are the orange highlighted area that are provided by the owner. And notice that these are all values. And then the model part is highlighted in blue. And it's important for you to include um, how the models are calculated. This is good model documentation. So as you develop more and more financial model, you want to be sure that not just you understand how the model is constructed, but your coworker, your boss, and in the future, your subordinates can continue to use and maintain these models. So the first one is um, adjusted income from operations. We said this is from table 10.2. So let's refer to table 10.2. So we know where that comes from. That's our um, that's the income that we adjust that we compute that we have make the adjustment to. After tax income again, here is the formula. This usually comes from your textbook. And of course, um, you will have to come up with this formula um, in the future when you're working. All right. So we have after tax cash flow and reinvestment rate is the long term growth rate. Again, this is provided by the owner divided by ROA and ROA is um, it's provided by the owner. But you can also verify that by checking against the uh, income statement. Finally, the investment investment is equal to the after tax cash flows times the reinvestment rate. Now, even though the current that rate is, that ratio is zero. We want to construct a model so that it can accommodate um, if the owner or the buyer uh, decided to um, change the debt ratio in the future. So this is an estimate we assume um, conducted by the owner as it is seeking out future buyers. Okay. So the after tax cash flow in this case will be the after tax cash flow um, minus the reinvestment times one minus the debt ratio. Okay. Next, we're going to compute the cost of equity. We learned how to compute cost of equity from our last chapter. So each chapter that you learn, the materials will is it's cumulative so that you can apply it in real life. So once again, the beta is provided by the um, owner. Uh, this is unlever, uh, is unlever beta because the company currently uses no debt. So the first thing we need to do is adjust the, the lever uh, from the unlever beta into lever beta. And this is from the uh, last chapter, from the chapter on capital budgeting and cost of capital. Um, again, for your future, uh, for your personal uh, reference, you want to make sure that the, the, the model is clearly labeled. Um, the unlever, to convert lever beta in, unlever beta into lever beta, we need the debt to equity ratio. We don't have the debt to equity ratio in here. We have the debt ratio. So I put a hint in there on terms of how you can convert the debt ratio into the debt to equity ratio. And it's relatively straightforward because one minus step is equity. Okay, so the unlever beta will be, I'm sorry, the lever beta will be unlever beta times one plus one minus the tax rate. So the tax rate is here, 35%, uh, times the debt to equity ratio. Again, the debt to equity ratio is the debt ratio, which is zero here, divided by one minus the debt ratio. Okay, it's very important to count all your parentheses correctly. And um, Excel actually color coded your parentheses, so it helps you to make sure that your parentheses are ba balanced. And this is not formatted correctly, so we can change that. Okay. Uh, notice our lever beta is exactly the same as our lever beta, and that is to be expected because our current debt ratio is zero. Uh, to make sure to check your model, you can change the debt ratio to make sure that um, your lever beta goes up and your free cash flow to equity goes down. So let's take a quick check on this. Let's say you, you have a debt ratio of 20%. Indeed, you have to put in more money. So free cash flow to equity holder goes, um, um, you have to put in less money. So free cash flow to equity holder goes up, but you increase the risk. So beta went also went up. 
So higher, uh, lower investment, higher risk. And cost of equity is relatively straightforward, is your long-term risk free rate, which was given. And plus the lever beta times the equity risk premium. So here's our cost of equity. And once we have that, we can compute the equity value. Um, so again, we're using free cash flow to equity and we're using cost of equity. So when we compute the present value is equal to um, the e equity value. Um, and we need to use the free cash flow to equity times one plus growth rate because we need the equity in the next year. So free cash flow to equity, we compute it um, here times one plus the long-term growth rate. And long-term growth rate is provided by the uh, owner divided by the cost of equity, which, which we just computed, minus, again, the long-term growth rate. So our equity value is $1.36 million. And we have to apply the um, illiquidity discount to this. So that's just the equity value times one minus the discount. So our estimated equity value after all the adjustment is $955,601. And of course, this is our base case. A very important part of financial analysis is to ask what if questions. The whole reason why we construct financial model is to enable us to ask those questions. And in this particular exercise, I want to um, also highlight another important limitation or quirks of Excel. When you do sensitivity analysis, the assumptions and the output must be on the same page. So in here, I separated the cash flow adjustment page from the const uh, from the um, constant growth model page so if my um, assumptions so the cases that I want to do sensitivity analysis on is the savings on cost of goods so I'll have to bring that decision variable that I computed which is the equity value to this page before Excel can conduct the analysis. So what you can do is you have to include that in here. So I'm going to first, I'm going to be lazy. I just copy the label. So we want to compute, we want to include the equity value. This is our final decision variable. So if you are the buyer, there are two main things that, that you'll be looking at. One is the income from operation, and then the other is the final equity value. So I'll bring that over here. So I don't have to redo the calculation. I just simply reference this, the cell in table three that contains the calculation. If the formula is, uh, the format is not correct, we can always adjust for that. Okay. Uh, another way you can do is use a format copy or the format painter. I use this a lot because it copies everything, including color. So now that we have the, um, decision variable and the assumption on the same page, we can conduct sensitivity analysis. Remember that we can do that using the data, what if analysis. And we're gonna do scenario manager again. We're gonna add a base case. And the cell that we want to change is cell B11 that contains the savings some cost of goods sold. Okay. Now I'm going to show another method to create scenario analysis because this is such a simple case. So we can add another case and let's call that um, worst case. And that will be when we have the OS, low estimate. So this is B11. And we're going to make that in the low estimate is $27,000.
Then you can also put in the best case. And the best case is $42,000. So this is different from what you have done before. So now we again, we have the three cases. We can then go back and show the different cases. So let's say we want to look at the worst case. Select show. Notice that you change this value to the worst case. And of course, our value is lower. And the best case, again, we can show that. And that will change that to a high, higher number because that's our best case. Or we can go back to show the base case. So again, back to $34,500. We can also create a scenario summary. And in this case, you can choose two. So you can include the cash flow and the value. And Excel will automatically create that for you. Again, very important to label your calculate um, your your output. So again, we can make life easy for us and just copy that. Uh, the assumption that we are changing is the savings from reduction in cost of goods sold and B17 and B19. Again, that's very easy. B17 is the adjusted income from operation. And B19 is the equity value. So now you have the, um, again, you can make this a lot um, prettier. Um, again, you can use a simple format painter that will help you identify um, copy all the formats over. So you can um, create better label, uh, but this at least um, clearly identify what your assum what assumptions you are changing and how does, that, how does that impact your decision variable, which are the adjusted income and also the eventual equity value. So we, the range here is quite a bit, is $50,000. This concludes um, this particular exercise. In the next exercise, we're going to go for a, the example for a transition on non-constant growth model. See you again soon.